this. And also, I'm also um, so so happy and so thankful to God to officially announce officially today that the cabinet, the bishop and the cabinet, uh, appointing us for the fourth year at Davis Street. So that's official because we just had our annual conference online uh, last week, and uh, I saw my name again, Davis Street Church. So shall we give God praise and glory for that? So thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for He is faithful. He is among us. He walked with us through this unusual moment in our lives to remind us that, that Jesus is our hope, that Jesus is our answer to all the challenges that we're facing today. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit among us. Thank you for joining among us in the good times and tough times of life, even in such a time like this, Lord. Help us as we ponder the word of God today, so that we will come out from this experience, from this worship, honor you and to glorify your name and our lives may be transformed. For in this we pray in Christ's most holy name. Amen. As I've said, so much things have happened in our world and in our lives since the last time we gathered face to face. Who would have think that we need to be conscious about making sure we wash our hands and we bring our sanitizer or even to wear our mask to protect ourselves, even right here in the house of the Lord. Who would have think that congregational singing, or even shaking hands, or even passing on the offering plates can spread germs? Indeed, this pandemic brought a lot of changes in the way we live our lives in the way we do our day-to-day -day work or being engaged in, in, in our, you know, ordinary way of life. But there's one thing, there's one thing that remains and will not change at all, and that is Jesus is our Lord. Can we hear amen, church? Jesus is our Lord. That if we declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with our heart that God indeed raised Him, raised Him from the dead, then each one of us will have the assurance of the salvation. And the, five, the Bible further says in the text that Pastor Jane just read for us that anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. Anyone, anyone that believes in Him will never be put to shame. Paul further says that, that there is no difference between Jews or Gentiles. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What an amazing truth. What an amazing promise. What an amazing message that the Lord wants to share with us as we gathered for the first time face to face after so many months of worshiping in our homes and in our different places. The message version of this text on Romans chapter 10, I love the version of message version, and it goes like this. No one who trusts God like this, that means you and I who are followers of Jesus, no one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, that is if you have the heart and soul of trusting God, then you will 
never regret it. That's that's the message version. You will you will never regret it. It's exactly the same no matter what a person's religious background may be. The same God for all of us, acting the same incredibly generously or generous way to everyone who calls out to help. That means anyone who calls out for help in the name of Jesus, everyone who calls help God will get help. Can we hear amen, church? You know, I picked up Judy and Elaine yesterday. Uh, they got back from California because my father-in-law had a, um, a minor stroke. And in this unusual time, you, you don't get to the plane. You want to stay out from the airport as much as possible. So we have no choice. Judy needs to see her dad that she has not seen for five years. Pray for, with him and to offer comfort and care. So last week, exactly a week ago, Sunday afternoon, we drove to Raleigh-Durham Airport. And I was just so much, you know, I used to travel. I, you, you always keep me going different places, uh, in different parts of the world. And, and airports are usually bustling with so many people. But Sunday, last Sunday, was just so much different. You can drop a, a pin and you can hear the sound. Because there are no people at the airport except a few handful. And we are such in such a, a very depressed moments. Wherein we see a, a, a nation that is facing so much unemployment, high rise of unemployment, people who are losing their jobs, people who are not able to pay for their bills. And as I went that at the airport, I can also see the same situations. The airline industries are losing billions because nobody wants to get in the plane. And praise God, Judy and, and Elaine were, were able to get back home. They're, they're now quarantining themselves to make sure that they that we all got to be protecting ourselves. That's why they're not here today. But I'm saying this because in the midst of so much things that have happened in our world and in our lives due to the pandemic, the Bible reminds us that with Jesus, you will never be disappointed. Can you hear me, that church? With Jesus, you and I will never be disappointed. Because this text, this Romans chapter 10, is an assurance that Jesus will give us an abundant life. Everything is possible when we put our faith and trust in the God who is bigger than all of this pandemic, who is bigger than all of the problems and challenges that we face. The Bible promises abundant life for all who believe in Him. Jesus said in John chapter 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But hear this church. I have come that they may have life. Life with all of its abundance. The life that Jesus offers does not start when we get to heaven. This abundant life starts here now. This morning... I am so honored and blessed to join with brave servants of our church who are waking up as early as 6.30 in the morning just to prepare this grab-and-go breakfast. You know, we, we changes the mode of how we serve breakfast in the light of this um, pandemic. So what we did, we, they, they, our breakfast folks are starting to put all this bag, uh, you know, a bag... Um, like a, a brag, uh, carry on uh, food that they can put on. So they put it on in, in, a, in a bag and then give it away. And so, so when I got here, there are just, you know, lots of people lining up. And we started the worship again. We put back the worship again to, be, to remind ourselves that, uh, 
that God is a, is a God of hope. And I'm sharing this to you all because every time I participate in breakfast ministry like this, it is a sign of God's abundant life. Amen? That this church is continually offering life for those that are in needs of lifeline. And this is one way for us to experience abundant life, not when we die and go up to heaven, but abundant life that Jesus promises to us is abundant life that begins today. Amen? It begins with you and me today acknowledging in our minds, in our hearts, that I'm not going to be getting disappointed with what I'm seeing on television today. Amen? I'm not going to be disappointed with what a politician will say to me today. I'm going to be clinging on with my faith to a God who gives me abundant life. This is a message of grace. This is the message of hope that when we place our hope in Jesus, we will not be disappointed. It doesn't mean that the problems will go away. It doesn't mean that, that we will not be laid off. It doesn't mean that we're, we're, we're not going to have a hard time facing the reality of what we're happening in our communities and in our nation today. But it changes the way we respond. That's what this Bible, this is what Paul is trying to bring to you and to me today. It changes our perspective. It changes how we deal with the situations that are going on right now in our lives. And this theme throughout the entire Bible, they're all throughout the Scripture. God reminded the Israelites over and over again to put their trust to Him and to put their confidence on God. And David said in Psalm 34, The Lord redeems His servants, and no one will be condemned who takes refuge in Him. Amen? So not only that in Jesus we will never be disappointed, but also with Jesus we are blessed. Amen? Do you agree that you are a blessed child of God? I just want you to do like this, to acknowledge that we are blessed. You know, we are blessed. You know, this past week, I had a... I, I'm just being honored because I, I officiated two funerals. I officiated two funerals for two blessed members of this church. The first was Earl Bryan. How many of you know Earl Bryan, Brother Earl? You all remember a couple of, only a few years ago, we had a baptism for him. We immersed him right here outside. There was just a big service. And um, he unexpectedly passed away, I believe, due to a heart attack. Um, so there were, there were, there were, it was a wonderful service at the funeral home. Um, Miss Sylvia and uh, Pastor Mike, Pastor Pat, and Sarah, and, and some from our church family came in there. It's just a wonderful moment of, of celebrating the life of someone who was a blessing. It was a blessing to me, a blessing for many of us. But also, we have also another service yesterday for Miss Gertrude Lee who died at the age of 93. And Miss Nancy was there, some Cindy was there. So it was also a, a time of celebration of life for another member of uh, our church, one of the saints of our church, who was also a blessing. So church, in this text that we have just read, with Jesus, we are blessed. We are blessed. By placing our confidence and trust in the God who is in control, we've been reminded over and over again that we are blessed. Jeremiah said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. He went on to say he will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always open, always open green. 
It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. See, church, by placing our confidence in the Lord, we do not have to worry about anything. Amen? And again, this does not ignore the reality of challenges that we face about paying bills or losing jobs or a relational problem. But we don't need to worry all of this because we are in God's economy. The Lord is able to richly bless us and make all grace abound in our lives simply because He loves us and we put our trust in Him. Amen? I cite you two wonderful joy in my heart about how God's economy works at Davy Street. One of them is this church organ that we have just received as a gift from one of our churches in Durham. Shall we give clap and to the Lord for that? For the last several months, we've been talking about how we will be able, how we're able to, to change or replace our old organ, caused a lot of debates and discussions. And then finally God said, just trust me. Can you all understand? All you have to do is not to worry about and we'll take care of it. So God gave us a church organ. And God gave us these new carpets. Can we hear amen to that church? God, God gave us the camera right now, the technology that we can use. And I can go on and go on to remind ourselves that with Jesus, you will never be disappointed. Amen? That with Jesus, we are blessed. And finally, with Jesus, there will be no distinction. This passage is an amazing glimpse. This text on Romans chapter 10 is an amazing glimpse into the heart of God. Because this text shows us that God does not choose us based on our nationality. God does not choose us on the basis of our heritage. God does not choose you and me on the basis of the color of your skin or any other criteria. Paul said in Romans chapter 2, God does not show favoritism. Amen? With God, there is no partiality or unfairness, and He does not consider one person more valued than the other. In fact, the King James Version of Acts chapter 10, it says like this, God is no respecter of person. This is a great thing because Paul is teaching us that when God looks as to us, he does, not, he does not think about you whether you are Jew or Gentile, whether you are American, whether you are an immigrant, whether you are man or woman. What Paul is trying to say here is that God, who is the same Lord, and is Lord over all, bestows His blessing upon all who call upon Him in the name of Jesus. Amen? Because of our relationship with Jesus, that is the only distinctions that makes us different from the rest of the world. Amen? This reinforces the truth that we are accepted and loved solely on the basis of our relationship with our living Savior. Isn't that a freeing reality that even in the midst of all the racial tensions happening in our country and in our world today, we know that God equally loves everyone. And we are also called to be the embodiment of that love for others. Amen? All of this is yours through faith in Jesus. For everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. That means all. It's not just the Democrats or Republicans. It means all. Amen? It's not just black or white or brown or yellow. It means all who call upon Him will be saved. All it takes is to trust Him as our Savior and look to Him as our Lord. Paul says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, 
then you will be saved regardless of whatever, where you come from, of whatever you speak or your accent or your nationality or your background. It doesn't matter. Since God does not show favoritism, you and I know that without a shadow of doubt that you and I will be saved through His promise. Amen? In closing, there's a wonderful hymn that probably you all know, and I'm going to invite uh, Sister Brenda and Sister Kitty to help us sing this. This wonderful hymn called In Christ Alone. And when they sing this for us, I want us to meditate on the words and the, and the music behind this as we put this message into a closure. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He's my light, my strength, my song. His cornerstone, this solid ground, firm to the fiercest drought. Praise God. Thank you so much. Church, in Christ alone, our hope is found. Amen? In Christ alone, we trust the one who will brought us out from captivity of the darkness of our sin into God's marvelous light. Amen? That when we are weak, Jesus is our strength. In every circumstance, we praise and worship Him. For He fills our hearts with His love and our lips with songs of praise to Him. But whatever we face, whatever we face, good times or bad, our hope is in Christ alone. When we face difficulty, Jesus is with us and we can trust Him to lead us through the fiercest storms of our lives. In Christ alone, we can stand firm in the midst of all this pandemic and all the situations and trials and tribulations that we may face in this world. In Christ alone, we can find peace. We do not be afraid because Christ is with you and with me. Amen? To the mighty power of God's Spirit. Embrace this promise and this gift. That indeed, Christ alone is our hope. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen.
for the last several months, we continue on to be a prayerful church. Amen? With or without this unprecedented time that we face, we always gather, whether on Zoom, I've seen amazing prayer warriors that defied our physical limitations, connecting themselves online and able to meet with us on Wednesday night to lift up those names because this church is indeed a prayerful church. Amen? We come recognizing that God alone can meet our needs. We take our prayers so seriously here at Davy Street that no matter where we are, we lift them up. Individual names. Hearts are being sent out. Prayers are being lifted up. Comforts are being extended. Meals are being offered. And the list of comforts and caring ministries goes on and on. Today, as we gathered again, corporately in this house of the Lord, we lift up again those names and those that we hold dear in our hearts. We continue to invite you to send in your prayer requests, whether online and for those who are watching online, to send them also at davisunited.org. One thing I give praise and glory to God that I want to share with you lately, and Brother Nick is here, Miss Cindy Jenkins was able to join with us in the last couple of our prayer gatherings online. Can we hear amen to that church? Shall we give clap to the Lord for that? Cindy is one of our amazing saints of the church who is, before all happened to her, she was the lead, uh, one of our leaders in our prayer ministry. So thanks be to God that nothing can keep us from becoming a prayer warrior for Jesus. So let us join together in this moment of prayer. And if you're led by the Spirit, you also can come and offer, come to the altar rail as we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, We thank you for bringing us back into the house of the Lord. It feels so different. There's some kind of a longing, a hunger in our hearts to gather face to face. And thank you, God, for giving us the wisdom giving us the guidance and the resources that we need so that we can have this step of faith to be back, to be back in, your, in this beautiful sanctuary, but at the same time also keeping ourselves safety and protected. Thank you for the leadership of our church, Thank you for our response team. Thank you for our church staff. Thank you for our church council. Thank you, God, for putting everything in place so that we may be able to be here today. And for those that are not able to be with us, we are also thankful that you have given us the technology of live stream, website, Zoom, and all these other forms of media as God's instrument to convey the importance of connecting with you. That even though they, you are, they are brothers and sisters who are not with us and among us today, that they can be able to be part of this communal worship celebration. 
this morning we lift up all the names that we hold in our hearts and those names that are on our prayer list. We just pray, O oh God, that you will continue on to be with each and every one. We pray for the families of Earl Bryan as well as the families of Miss Gertrude Lee as they continue on to acknowledge the loss and grieve for their loved ones even as we celebrate the lives that they have lived. We continue on to pray for our nation and for our world in the midst of this crisis. And thank you for reminding us from your word today not to be disappointed, but rather be hopeful and to trust in you all the way. That we are reminded from your word that we have just read and preached that we are blessed people of God and that you do not choose us based on our nationalities or color or creeds, but rather you call us on our relationship with you. We pray for this church, O oh Lord, and for all of our Christian churches throughout the world who are adapting, who are being creative and innovative with this new normal. Help us to continue on to boldly proclaim the unceasing message of Christ, hope, salvation, and the message of reconciliation throughout the world. And as we gather this morning, we also gather to be the forgiving people of God. Seeking, O oh Lord, that you will forgive us for all of our sins. Let us now come as we ask for God's forgiveness. Forgiving and gracious Lord, we come here this day with so many things on our hearts. We managed to get through spring and are heading towards the complexities of the summer months. This month for many will be times of transition, children graduating from school and heading out into the world, young people getting married, families planning their vacations, some people planning retirement. And for others, the transitions may be from healthy li living to lives filled with illness and pain. We confess that we have not always paid attention to these transitions, unaware of the spiritual and emotional adjustments that they require of those in process. Forgive us, O oh God, when we get too busy with our own lives, that we don't take time to reach out to someone who is ill, someone who is mourning the loss of loved ones, someone who feels lost and alone. Remind us again of how Christ offered his whole life that we might live. He taught us how to be people of compassion and reconciliation. Be with us as we seek to turn our lives around back toward you, O Lord. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Even as we pray, the people that, that, people that calling us to pray, his disciples saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power. To the Lord. Dear friends, listen to the good news. Christ came to give us new life, to redeem and heal our brokenness, and we are made whole through His boundless love. Say this with me, church. Thanks be to God. Amen.
in response to hearing God's word today, as well as coming to corporately offer our prayers to the Lord, we offer our tithes and offerings to God as an act of worship to the one whom we cannot outgive. Amen? Giving is an act of worship because God is blessing us. Amen? In this very unusual time, we will not pass on the offering place just like what we normally do. But instead, I invite you to respond in several ways. First of all, I invite you to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Amen? Just by having each one of you today, you are already demonstrating what it means to offer your bodies to God. I invite you also to offer it by offering your service and your witness to share Christ to others at all times, whether in the grocery stores or whether you are in a mall or whether you, know, you are with your neighborhood. Just offer the sense of hope for others, most especially during this time. And finally, we can offer tangibly our tithes and offerings today by going online, or you can place your offering and tithes as you depart from our service today. Amen? You know, one thing I want to share with you as we pray for those for uh, during this time of giving is that the Lord reminds us that He will take care of us. Amen? I have seen that in my life throughout this whole time of pandemic, how God took care of us. And that is the same hope that he wants you to receive today and every day of our lives. As long as you faithfully respond to give, not just of your tithes and offering, but to give yourselves, he will be faithful to recognize that gift and bless you all the way and all the more. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the generosity that comes from you, Lord. Indeed, you constantly remind us that we cannot outgive you. Amen? We cannot outgive you, for you already gave to us the greatest gift of all. And bless, O oh God, this church has been so generous, O oh God, to be your instrument of generosity to others. Bless the faithfulness and generosity of each of the members of this church, Lord, that you continue to pour upon your blessing upon each one of them, Lord, as we offer our tithes and our gifts and our service and our witness and our presence as an act of worship to you. For we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
again, thanks be to God that you're able to join with us physically for the first time after several months. Shall we give God the glory and praise for that? And again, Lord, we also thank everyone who are not able to be with us physically and who, wherever you are as you watch this live stream, we also give glory and praise to God that you're able to connect with us. As we go forth from this place, indeed, Christ alone. Amen? Amen? Christ alone. He is our hope. Amen? Christ alone is offering us the blessing. Amen? And Christ alone reminds us that we are no longer Jew nor Greek. That He did not label us because He wants us only to focus on Him. Cling on to the hope, to the promise from the Word of God today. May we go forth in the midst of the turmoil and challenges in our lives, knowing that Christ alone is among us and with us. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and God's Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.